A bit of a different one this week. A look at YouTube, social media and a bad review. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Social media. Hmm. You know, I must be one of the few people on the planet who doesn't feel the need to live my life on Facebook. I haven't got the time, inclination or feel the need at all. Now, I'm big enough to realise that it's me and I'm very much the odd one out and I respect people's rights and, above all, their right to have an opinion and even air it if they really must and they feel the need. Because I do consider myself a live and let live kind of person. And you know, people fought and died to give everyone the right to free speech. Which in itself makes me a bit of a patriot. Again, my choice. I also run this YouTube channel, so I can hardly claim to not being a user of social media albeit in a non-Facebook type format. I consider this more of a programme making platform and yes, it's written and produced by me so it will have my opinion in there somewhere. Even though I do try to keep it balanced and I do also take in and try to accommodate other people's opinions too. But I also understand you can never please all of the people all of the time. So again, I understand and respect that. Now, name calling, profanity and trolls. No. No. They're not allowed in there because that doesn't fit, not on a channel that has a percentage of under 18s tuning in to watch. Sure, they probably hear far worse from school and sadly, in some cases, even from their home environment. But that doesn't make it right. Again, not in my opinion. I do take the role of producer of this channel very seriously, which is probably hard to understand when I consider AAR On Air to be not only a gun review channel, but hopefully somewhere along the lines, entertaining too. To add a change and maybe involve others in the family to encourage them into our sport. The whole team consider themselves ambassadors for the sport and the industry for that matter. And with that role comes responsibilities. And some in the industry may not like it. Which again, these responsibilities are taken seriously with an element of fun thrown in for good measure. I get a few comments from viewers and even from the odd individual from within the industry who really should know better along the lines of why don't you verbally trash a gun or product? Why don't you swear to emphasise? You never say something is rubbish. Not all the guns you review can be good. OK, OK. Let's just take a moment to look at that, shall we? I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who were brought up in a family environment such as mine and the environment that I was brought up in. And we were taught things like, if you can't say something good about someone, and I can hear you saying the rest, then don't say anything at all. Advice that I also passed on to my children and will continue to pass it on to my grandchildren. And getting hold of a budget gun with the sole intention of calling it and pointing it out to be rubbish with a heavy, non-adjustable trigger and plasticky will surely get you some thumbs up from some hate-seeking individuals out there. And it turns you into one of the things that you come to loathe and pity as a YouTube content provider. The uneducated, uncaring, unworthy troll. You see, if I'm reviewing a gun, I review it as a stand-alone item. 
and I am mindful of the category it fits into and the individuals who are likely to want to buy it. For example, if I'm reviewing a £100 budget gun, I'm not expecting it to have a fully adjustable match-grade trigger with a walnut Manelli stock and a cold hammer-forged barrel and the quietest Huggett silencer built into it, along with a hard case and two spare magazines. It's more likely to be a bit heavy on the trigger with a plastic stock, maybe a reasonable rifle barrel, and it's likely to be a little loud maybe. Single shot, and it's going to come in a brown cardboard box. But you know what? If it's fun to use, reasonably accurate, and gets the rest of the family involved, or gets rid of that rat you have at the bottom of the garden that's been annoying the missus, then surely trashing it because it isn't as good as your laminated stock Viroc isn't a fair and reasonable approach to the review. Moreover, you have to compare it to such as a gun ten times the price because someone out there is thinking it's going to be up to that standard, then it's likely to appear patronising. So, a cheap gun is reviewed as a cheap gun. And if there are a few surprises along the way for a gun in that price category, then that is surely worth a mention. You know, not all people can afford the latest offering from the high-end manufacturers and trashing the mid to low price guns because you're comparing them to a high-end gun is not a best practice and leaves the people with less money available either feeling like one of life's losers thanks to a condescending review or comment, for that matter, around the gun that they've just bought or feeling that they should perhaps leave the sport alone because it's just full of toffee-nosed, plebiscidal individuals who are going to look down at them rather than encourage them into a welcoming community. You know, we all have to start somewhere. The other issue is the damage that is done to the manufacturer from throwaway comments that get the author of such derogatory comments a quick thrill or recognition, which soon turns into a reputation. And not a good one at that. That doesn't mean if I get a gun that is utter garbage, you give it a glowing review. Far from it. The first thing I do is contact the manufacturer and either give them some feedback to enable them to improve their gun or for them to accept they have sent a bad one out that isn't up to their expected standard and that they need to get it sorted before a review is published. This year alone, which is 2022, I have so far had three manufacturers send me their substandard guns, or at least what I consider to be substandard. Some were prototypes and others supposed to be the completed item. These range from around £500 guns through to over £2,000 guns. Wow! So far, Two of the manufacturers have taken the feedback on board and improved the guns and sent new ones back for review. One is still trying to sort the issue, but hopefully we'll have it done and the gun back to me soon. And before anyone asks, no, I don't think naming and shaming them here is the right thing to do either. You see, sometimes I can spend four days filming and producing the programme only to have the video sent to the manufacturer from me along with their gun and a must-do-better comment at the bottom of their homework sheet and a C-, minus. all of which is a lot of work and time for me. But if they then get it sorted, then everyone wins. 
the manufacturer finishes up with a decent gun and a reputation intact and still in business to bring new and innovative guns to the marketplace for all to enjoy. On top of that, the consumer benefits by having a new gun that works and they can enjoy it without the need to be returning them to the shop all upset because they can't find a barn door big enough for them to hit at nearly point-blank range. Hopefully, you're starting to see my logic and hopefully realise my concern and care for the whole shooting community, manufacturers and consumers. So, I could be one of those quick thrill and name calling individuals who seem to trash things just because they can and they've got a platform and then, not surprisingly, find companies don't want to supply them or deal with them anymore. Which then stops me giving quality feedback that can make a difference to that community as a whole. That type of individual will still attract a following, but that has happened throughout history in all walks of life and will probably continue to do so, I'm sure. Now, I do hope this has been taken as an explanation of how the AAR team works and the approach that is taken here. It was simply intended to answer the genuine people who have asked questions. Do I like all the guns I review? No, not necessarily. But I could trash a gun because I don't like it, maybe because it's a military-style gun, and I personally prefer wooden guns and traditional style. But that wouldn't make me right. It would simply be my preference and could be taken wrongly that I think the gun is rubbish. And that wouldn't be fair or correct. So I try to see it from the perspective of the individual who is likely to be attracted to that style of gun. Do I use a teleprompter? Yes. When I'm in the studio, I do because it's more professional and is simply a better way of creating a seamless show without erms and mmm and lots of you knows. The content, however, is all written by me prior to the filming and after using, shooting and reviewing the gun in question. I suppose the next question is, do I work closely with manufacturers? Some, yes. I'm happy to work closely with most all of them and hopefully provide positive feedback to help the end consumer. But some manufacturers want to get involved with AAR more than others. Maybe the format doesn't suit all of them. Who knows? All of which is done on a non-sponsored or remunerated basis. I enjoy what I do and I get a bit of a kick out of hearing people comment about how the channel has got them back into shooting after years or how they became new into the sport and are really enjoying it. Occasionally I can be seen creating havoc down at Vector Air when they are short-staffed and they've been daft enough to ask me to come in and help out. And the feedback and comments I get from the guys and girls who come in is wonderful. And I try to take the suggestions on board wherever I can. It's a great environment. It's great fun and friendly with lots of coffee being drunk. And the time simply flies by when I'm there. Well, after saying all that little lot, it's time to review a gun. And rip it apart. AAR style. This week's Hoffring is a hard, basic plastic with a terrible trigger. The barrel is plastic and it's about as accurate over 10 metres as Stevie Wonder in a Pro-Am World Darts Tournament. And guess what? <laughs> I love it. And you're going to want one. It is a bug assault and it's purely made for hunting. Shall we do the walk around just for fun? Well, as I've said, it is all plastic and comes in... 
two styles black and grey and black and yellow. It is 54 centimetres or 21 and a quarter inches long and tips the scales at 660 grams or one pound seven ounce. And the balance into the shoulder is rubbish. The trigger isn't two stage and it's short and more on off than a smooth action. The front sight is open and the rear sight is not even adjustable. Heck, it doesn't even appear until you rack this little baby. Uh, this piece of plastic rubbish. It comes in two calibers, 2.5 and 3. Whatever that means. And yet, it takes the same size ammunition. It doesn't have any spare mags in the box and can only be filled from the top of the gun. The amount of rounds per fill up, I have no idea. You can't even buy the ammo at your local gun shop. You need to get yourself down the supermarket. <laughs> Putting it over the chrono is completely inconclusive. Blimey, this is going to give air gunning a bad name. So, why is it so good? And why do you want one? Because this little beauty is going to sort out your flying and crawling insect problem. And your Friday night fish and chips all at the same time. You see, you load this up with normal table salt and cock it with the shotgun style grip, then take aim with your automatically raised rear sight and fire away. Ho ho! Dispatching those unwanted blue bottles with ease and leaving only a trace of salt to keep the ghosts and ghoulies at bay. Or adding a portion to your Friday night fish and chips. Does it work? <laughs> yes, it does, undoubtedly. It is an assault on bugs, as the double entendre suggests. You need to be reasonably close, but if you're too close, it will demolish some lighter framed insects. The black one is suitable for trying to catch them in flight if you think you're good enough. And the yellow one, well, that option is more of a get them while they're down sort of action. It doesn't actually leave masses of salt everywhere. It does, in fact, use it quite sparingly. And no, I'm not going to fire it at anyone to see if it hurts. I'll leave that up to some other individuals to do after they've loaded themselves up with a few lemonades. Will it annoy the missus? Well, that depends if she gets a go or not. The kids will love it, and you may well have more salt around than you would like if left up to them. There are no chemicals involved, other than sodium, I suppose. And if it gets on your food, unlike fly spray, it won't hurt you and will probably save you the effort of using the salt shaker. Anyway, is it fun? Yes. Is it going to cost you as much as a Viroc? No. You'll need to part with around £40 UK for the black and grey and around £30 for the black and yellow. No CO2s required or pumps or tanks. Has this been a proper air gun review? Probably not. <laughs> but this channel is about a little more than just air guns. It's about fun for shooters too. Do I like it? Stupid question, really. Hopefully you've enjoyed this alternative programme. If you have, the usual thumbs up helps. Don't worry, normal service will be resumed next week. And then the negative guys can get back out of their holes again. Don't forget to subscribe, share and click the alarm bell. Join in the chats uh, with the forums and even Facebook if you want. I suppose I should at least have a Facebook account, personally. Mm. I know Mrs AAR takes care of most of that sort of thing and asks me questions that need a reply to. Where would I be without her? She also runs the merchandise. So you can check that out on the website. You will never guess where I got the bug assaults from. Yes. <laughs> the nutters down at Vector Air. 
Never let it be said that they haven't got a sense of humour. And of course, a really big thank you to you guys out there who help support the channel and actually get what we're trying to do here at AAR On Air. Check out the new news channel over here. And, well, that's it for this week. Please stay safe and shoot safe. And happy fly swatting. Bye for now. What about the outside test for this? Come on. I think I'll be here all day, won't I? Great fun.